Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to explain to you AWS's new free tier program. For those of you that haven't heard, AWS has completely overhauled this program as of July 15th, 2025. And unfortunately, there's a lot of great stuff in this program, but the documentation is really, really confusing. So what I want to do in this video is to help you understand all the details of how this new program works, including the nuances of how it behaves and how you can avoid some surprise bills. So let's just jump right into it and talk about some of the details of this new program. So as you can see in this screenshot here, when you now sign up for a new AWS account, there's two options that you have available to you. You have access access to the free tier program, which is a free usage of AWS for up to six months, or you can start with a paid program. And the paid program essentially means that you have access to all of the AWS services with no constraints uh, that would come to you under the free tier. So let's go through this step by step to talk about some of the details about how the free tier works and contrast it with the paid plan as well. Okay, so the first thing to know about the free tier is that you now have access to up to $200 in AWS credits. Now, although it says $200 here, initially you only get access to $100 of AWS credits. And uh, you have to complete a bunch of different tasks in your AWS account in order to receive the additional $100. And so what are these tasks you might say? So let me just uh, kind of drop these in here to explain them to you really quick. The first task is to set up an EC2 instance, a pretty straightforward thing to do. An EC2 instance is just a, a virtual server essentially, and I have a bunch of tutorials on my channel that'll walk you through how to do that. The second thing that you need to do to also receive, um, I guess for each one of these, you receive $20 in credits. There's five tasks in total. Uh, the second one is to set up a cost budget. Um, so this is essentially a way for you to set up a budget for your account so that you don't exceed certain dollar thresholds, uh, or if you do, to get notified of exceeding a certain threshold so that you, know, you can quickly change course and either delete the resource that's consuming that amount of money uh, or do something else with it. Now, the next task that you have to do is in the world of AI, which AWS is pushing really hard these days. Uh, so they want you to play with Amazon Bedrock, Bedrock Playground. Um, so the playground is just essentially to um, interact with their chats chat system. So there's a chat bot there. You have to enable some of the models uh, in order to do that first, which I can show you how to do in a future video, but it's a very straightforward thing to do. The next one is to create a web app using AWS Lambda. Specifically, you need to use function URLs in order to get credit for this. Let me just move this out of the way really quick. Uh, and then the final task that you need to do is you need to set up an RDS database, RDS meaning relational database service. Um, and this also only takes a couple of minutes as well. So in total, all of this stuff probably takes like maybe an hour or so, but you can probably crank through it really fast in like 20 or 25 minutes. I'll try to make a follow-up video that explains and walks you through how to do this um, so that it kind of streamlines the process for you so you can get the $200 in credits right out of the gate. Okay, so that's the, the credit business. Uh, the next thing to know is basically what they have down here is that the constraints of the services that you have access to. Let me just grab my pen really quick. Um, so you get free usage to select services. So you don't have access to all services right out of the gate. And like the, the mental model that they have is that the services that they restrict you having access to are the ones that require large purchases of infrastructure. So services like Amazon Kendra, which can be very, very expensive, uh, and you probably don't wanna use anyways unless you really know what you're doing and understand the cost implications. Now, included in the free tier, you're gonna get access to all the popular services, like 99% of the important stuff you'll have access to under the free tier. Things like Lambda, things like DynamoDB, API Gateway, RDS. Um, EC2, all the ones that we talked about over here. Um, all the, the important stuff, in my opinion, you're gonna have access to. Now, if you're wondering, you know, what are all the services that I won't have access to, um, then what you can do is you can go to this website right here, which is aws.com slash free. And you can scroll down to this section here, explore our offers. And if you go to the filter section here, you can go to plan type. And this is actually neat for a whole bunch of reasons because you can see like what's included in the free plan, what's included in the paid plan, and you can see what's on both plans. But what's useful here is paid plan exclusive. So this is the stuff that you get um, exclusively if you're on 
paid plans. In other words, what do you not get if you're on free plan, right? If we kind of look at this from the opposite perspective. So if we click on this, you're going to see these are a bunch of like kind of cool services, but stuff that like I don't really use and don't really know of many people who use. So stuff like AWS clean rooms, I don't even know what that is. Kendra, like we were saying before. Okay. Um, Flink, Apache Flink, which I have used before, but you can go like eight more here. You can kind of see them all. These are all like interesting services that have their uses, but are not very common. Like they're very niche specific. So um, I wouldn't really worry about uh, not having access to important stuff. Uh, all the stuff that's on here is stuff that's like very, very um, rare to actually have to use. Okay. Okay. Let's go back here to our Blackboard. Okay. Now there's a couple other details of the AWS free tier that you should know about. So let's talk about those now. Now, the first is, is that it says uh, free tier is up to six months. Okay. And how this works is that you have a certain amount of credits, right? So you have, you know, $100 initially, and then maybe you'll have $200 or something in between $100 and $200, depending on how many of these tasks that you do up here. And essentially, um, from the point that you create your account, you have six months. And after six months, your account will go into kind of a paused state. The resources won't necessarily be deleted. However, your account will be paused. And if you don't upgrade to the paid plan, then 90 days after that six month period, basically your account is gonna get deleted. So all the data that you had stored in there, all the databases, basically anything that exists in that account is gonna get wiped away, okay? So that's one detail that's important to know. Now there is a second way that your free tier can end. And that is if you exhaust all of the credits that you have available. So if you do stuff like you set up an RDS database with like a really big compute node and that kind of exhausts your $200 in one day, for example, then your, your free tier is gonna end in one day and you're basically going to have to upgrade to the paid plan or just get rid of the account, okay? So to summarize, if you don't hit the credit threshold in six months, then your account will be disabled and you'll have 90 days to decide if you want to upgrade it to paid um, or else lose all your data. And if you use all of your credits uh, at any time in the six month period, you'll immediately have to upgrade to the paid plan in order to keep using your account. And if you don't, you have 90 days. And if you still don't do anything after 90 days, then your account is going to get wiped out as well. Okay, so there's some uh, nuance here in how this works, but it's important to know about th these details. Now, the second thing that you should know about as well is that with the free tier, you also still need to provide a credit card, a credit card. And I know this is something that is kind of contentious because it's free tier, of course, why do you need to add a credit card? This is just kind of the rules that AWS set out. I guess it's to reduce friction when you want to upgrade to the paid plan, uh, but you won't get charged anything, of course, when you're on the free tier. Now, one important detail here is that in order to qualify for the free tier credits, you must do two things. First, you must use a brand new email that is not associated with another AWS account. And this also means you can't do cute things like your email and then add a plus sign and then a number at gmail.com, which is a common tactic to create multiple accounts quickly. AWS's logic will allow you to create this account, but you just won't be able to get the free tier credits. Now, the second rule is that you cannot reuse the same credit card belonging to a different AWS account. Now, this one is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Now, you may ask yourself, why are they making this so hard? My guess is that they want to ensure free tier is being used by people who are brand new to AWS and not people like me who is experienced and may want to get a couple hundred dollars of credits to play around with. But anyways, that's another thing to be aware of. And that kind of leads me into my next point, which is that in order to go from the free, free tier to the paid plan, you must explicitly upgrade. There's no automatic movement of free tier to paid. There's a button that you need to click in the AWS console in order to upgrade. Okay, so there's no accidental charges here that are going to happen. Um, it's going to always require your opt in. Okay, so those are the important details of AWS's new free tier. I did want to touch on one important thing, which is that like some of you folks with older accounts or have been with AWS for a while may be wondering about, you know, what about the old stuff? You had access to uh, different programs. One was called Always Free, Always Free, and then you had access to 
you know, 12 months free where you kind of had these free trials um, or 12 months after you created your account, you can use this, these AWS services, not be charged anything. And then you had these short-term trials, right? Short, short-term, sorry, forgive my writing here, uh, trials. Things like launching an AWS light sale instance, for example, for like a year or so and you don't get charged anything. So these programs still exist. Uh, always free is, is still present. So there's a certain amount of Lambda invocations, for example, that you can uh, burn through that are always going to be free. And there's certain services that you'll have access to um, for up to 12 months after you try them for the first time. That still exists. And then these short-term trials still exist. So all of this stuff still continues to exist. The only detail now is that when you create your account, you have this free tier and paid plan that you can choose from, um, but you still get kind of all this legacy stuff grandfathered in. Okay, so that is the details of AWS's new free tier. I hope this video was helpful in explaining uh, kind of how it works and some of the details and nuances of it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.